Hey guys, Forex here. Hope you're all well. Hope you all had a good Christmas. What you're looking at in front of you is a Seagull Mega Drive. Um, yeah, this thing's in fully working condition. Guys, uh, got Streets of Rage 2 going off in the background. Um, this Mega Drive actually belongs to a friend. And it's a Virgin Mega Drive, it's never been touched. And my friend was around my house the other day and he, he saw my Mega Drive. And my Mega Drive's had a number of mods done to it. It's had, uh, it's actually a switchless Mega Drive with the 5060 Hertz and language switch. Um, it's got uh, the cartridge slots been widened, and I've made new flaps for the cartridge slot. It makes it look a lot neater. And my Mega Drive's also been C-Sync modded as well, guys, and it gives a really good, crisp, sharp image. And um, yeah, my friend was around my ass the other night, took long, one look at my Mega Drive and was like, can you do that to my Mega Drive? And I'm like, yeah, no problem, I can do that. Um, he wants his Mega Drive doing a little bit different though, guys. He doesn't want a switchless Mega Drive. He wants actual physical switches um, because he's one of those old school guys where he likes to know where he stands with a switch, right? Because you know what position it's in, you know what, exactly what you get. Um, so he wants that, guys. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do to this Mega Drive, I'm going to C-Sync mod it, install 5060Hz switch and a language switch and I'm going to widen a cartridge slot for him. Um, but I'm going to break this up into two videos guys. The switch, the switch uh, for, the switches for the Pilot NTSC and the 60 uh, uh, sorry the language switch and the cartridge slot widening and making new flaps for the cartridge slot. That's going to be in the second part of the video, but this first part of the video is actually going to be the C-Sync mod itself. Guys, so um, give me five minutes to set everything up and I'll get cracking on with that. I have the Mega Drive stripped down. Um, the keen eyed viewer among you will know this is the v v VA6 Mega Drive. Um, before I get onto the C-Sync mod, I just want to clear up a little confusion when it comes to C-Sync mod in the Mega Drive. Let's get this right. Yeah, there we go, that should be good. Guys, now if you look at a typical Mega Mega Drive pinout for the AV port on the back of the Mega Drive, these pinouts can be a little bit confusing. Uh, and the reason for that is because if we look, we've got the usual suspects, right? We've got composite video, we've got green, red, blue, mono, ground. And then look at pin 7, guys. Pin 7, if we look at what pin 7 is, it says it's sync, right? So now, I can understand what a lot of people have, will assume from that is they'll go, oh, okay, the Mega Drive already outputs sync on pin 7. All I have to do is rewire my DIN connector that's on the end of my RGB SCART lead change pin 3 which is composite video to match up with pin 7 which would be sync and everyone's a winner right you can't do that guys um, and we get some pretty good clues why we can't do that if we have a look at the Mega Drive schematic so if we go to the Mega Drive schematic this is the Mega Drive schematic it's a video portion of the schematic guys I'm not going to show you the rest there's no point um, the first thing I want to do is zoom in a little bit so you can see it better and I want to confirm something for you if we move and look at the video out port this is the DIN connector on the back of the Mega Drive pin server is, is indeed C-Sync if we go over to the Mega Drive's custom chip the 315 5315 guys this chip does a lot of functions and one of its functions is to generate RGB and sync. And we can see that. If we look, we can see RGB on 27, 28, 29, and just underneath it, C sync at 42. Now, what's the first thing you notice about the C sync signal? It's active low, right? So if we follow these RGB signals and the C sync signal, we come along, we go up. And there's C-Sync, Seager labelled it for us. Thank you very much, Seager. And what happens to it next? It gets pulled high for a 2.2K resistor. 
that's a big red flag guys right there just remember that it gets pulled high what happens to it next it goes into the video encoder in pin 10 and then it branches off and goes straight out now what I'm going to do now guys is show you that signal on my scope and then I'm going to tell you why we can't use that signal as you can see I'm probing pin 7 of the Mega Drive's AV output with my scope probe and if we follow it along whoop, it goes into my scope and you can see what a C-Sync signal looks like now what C-Sync uh, consists of is a vertical pulse and a horizontal pulse and that's pretty much what you're seeing on the scope right now guys uh, and that's what C-Sync is it's, it's pretty much just made up of two signals hence the word composite sync C-Sync guys but I, I don't want you to concentrate on that right now what I want you to concentrate on what volt per division I'm on so I'm on one volt per division so what that basically means is each square you see is one volt so if we count the squares one two three four five we're on five volts now if you still not got what type of c-sync signal this is i'm going to tell you right now guys this is ttl c-sync and it's never a good idea to hook up ttl c-sync if you hooked it up to your tv like this from you know five volt your tv is just going to go what the hell is this guy trying to do to me and it's just simply not going to work guys so there you have it guys that's the reason why you just can't rewire your DIN connector straight to pin 7 and expect your TV to sync it guys um, yeah 5 volt TTL C-Sync uh, that's just not going to work on a TV your TV is going to be expecting around about a 1 volt peak to peak for a sync input and TTL 5 volt C-Sync is just not going to work now there's two ways you can modify a mega drive to output C-Sync um, the first, the quick and easiest way is to still wire in pin 7 to C-Sync but instead of just going straight out you go through a, a four, I think it's a 480 ohm resistor and what that will do is it will create a voltage divider in your TV because on the input of your composite video on your TV on the SCART there is a 75 ohm resistor and in conjunction with that 408 ohm resistor what that will do is it will drop that TTL C-Sync down to an acceptable level that a TV will uh, be expected. I do my C-Sync mod slightly different I get my C-Sync straight out the video encoder chip uh, and the reason I do that is because I feel it gives a better picture um, but that's just my personal opinion if, if you want to just rewire your DIN connector on your RGB SCART lead and with a 480 ohm resistor hey you know that's your choice you can go ahead and do that I prefer to do it where I actually tap into the C-Sync coming out of the video encoder chip so uh, that's the mod I'm going to do guys so I'm going to crack on with that we're back with the schematic first thing I'm going to do is zoom in so you can see this a little bit better there we go um, we're going to follow that C-Sync coming out of the custom chip again and as you can see here it is 42, let's follow it along goes along, goes up, gets pulled up by this pull-up resistor and it goes into pin 10 C-Sync in now what I want you to look at is the pin above that, pin 11 pin 11 is C-Sync out and that's where we're going to get our C-Sync from guys so what I'll do now is I'll show you a similar picture to this it's just I've just modified the picture a bit so you can see what we're going to do when we do this C-Sync mod this is the edited one I've done um, if I zoom in again we don't need to know where C-Sync originates now we already know um, what we're looking at now is the video encoder chip uh, we still need a C-Sync signal coming into pin 10 um, because C-Sync is used to generate all the signals like composite video so we still need a C-Sync in guys remember that um, but what you'll notice now is we've chopped the, 
trace so it's not going out anymore instead what it's doing now sorry bang the camera up what it's doing now is instead of it coming up here and going out we're tapping into C-Sync out of the video encoder chip we're coming up we're going through an electrolytic capacitor 220 microfarad we go for a 75 ohm resistor and then we go out and, and that's the mod right there that's what we're going to do yeah I don't know how well this is going to come out on camera because the trace is really small but the trace we need to cut is this one here you can see it's really tiny just need to nick that across there so I'll, I'll do that guys because that's the trace that goes off the pin 7 of the um, Mega Drives AVR and that's uh, TTLC sync so we need to cut that I've finished um, I've finished cutting the trace there look see where I've cut it that's the one that goes off to this pin here this is pin 7 of the Mega Drive's output that's uh, C sync TTL C sync so that's uh, TTL C sync disabled now I just wanted to uh, give you a little look at what the resistor and capacitor looks like before I actually put each thing tubing on it um, I'll show you what it's going to how it's going to see is the video encoder chip guys so we've got pin 11 here and it's pretty much going to sit like that and then that white wire is going to go off to just there guys so, no, so I'll get all that wired in and uh, let you see what it looks like afterwards then we're done as you can see the capacitor goes to pin 11 of the video encoder chip which is ceasing out which goes into the plus of the capacitor the minus out of the capacitor has got a 75 ohm resistor on it and then on the opposite side of that is we've got a wire and then it goes all the way to the DIN out socket pin 7 of the DIN out socket on the Mega Drive and that's the Mega Drive part taken care of so I can put the heat shrink back on and um, then all I have to take care of is the DIN connector swap composite video to match up so it matches pin 7 on this Mega Drive and we should have C-Sync out guys so the, that's what I'm going to do next so uh, here's the DIN connector for the Mega Drive as you can see this one is composite video this yellow kit wire here um, just above that is where pin 7 is of the Mega Drive so we need to remove the composite video which is pin 3 and we need to move it into match pin 7 which is C-Sync so that's what I'm going to do next to swap this wire from here to here wire has been moved from pin 3 which is here which was composite video it now goes to pin 7 which matches up with our new non TTL level C-Sync so uh, I'm going to get all this cable back together get the mega drive hooked up and we'll give it a test guys so uh, be back in a little while. As you can see, we're probing pin 7 of the Mega Drive's EV output, but this time that's got um, C Sync coming from the video encoder chip. And if we look at my scope, we can see I'm still on 1 volt per division, but you can see that the C Sync level is around about 1 volt peak to peak now, which is pretty ideal for what the TV is expecting guys so uh, yeah I don't have any qualms about hooking this up to a TV and uh, test it out so that's what I'm going to do next guys get this thing connected to the TV and we'll see if we get a decent picture it's time to power this thing on uh, we should get a really crisp sharp picture now because we're using C-Sync for sync not composite video and it's at the right level you know that one volt mark saw it on my scope that TV is expecting so uh, let's power this thing on and yeah we've got it baby now you probably can't see this 
guys because I'm recording the TV through a camera but the thing I can notice straight away is that picture is sharper Yeah, we're done guys, this uh, video is done. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about what we've actually done. Um, all we've really done is disable TTL C-Sync going to pin 7 on the output DIN of the Mega Drive and just sent a, a, a more reasonable C-Sync a, a TV would um, recognize. Um, so we've not changed any of the pin out of the Mega Drive, so Theoretically, my friend could, if he wanted to later on, sell this Mega Drive on and, you know, the person who gets it can go out and get a, a composite video cable hook up the Mega Drive that way and it still works because composite video is still coming out on the same pin he could go out and get an RGB Scott uh, cable and yeah, it would still work perfectly normal like any other Mega Drive um, so yeah, I'm, I'm done guys this first part of the video is pretty much done um, the next part of the video I'll be 50 60 Hertz and language switching it I'll be widening the cartridge slot and um, making new flaps so uh, yeah guys if you like the video like subscribe comment all the usual stuff and I'll catch you on the next one Okay guys, moment of truth. Let's power this thing on. Please don't blow up. <laughs>
that's a fail. <laughs> Can you see why it's not working? Can you see why I'm not getting a picture? <laughs> oh, f***ing hell.